Shalom, my friends. Welcome to this week's Word Study. Today, uh, we're going to talk about the joy of Yahuwah. And, you know, the joy of Yahuwah, joy? I don't know. <laughs> Not really, you know. We'll, um, we'll see that... Um, there's a better way of understanding this English word, uh, joy, which replaces the Father's word, chedwa. It's the chedwa of Yahuwah. But uh, before we begin, let's pitch this tent with our Elohim and receive his melta. <laughs> His understanding. Let's bow our hearts. Dear beloved Abba Father, we come before you, Father, to worship you, to praise you, and to thank you, Abba, for bringing your light into our hearts and dispelling the darkness and confusion that surrounds us in this world. As we partake in this study of your word, Father, we thank you for washing us in your word that our eyes may be opened, our ears and our hearts may be opened to seeing the truth, your truth. As we give this day, Father, to you, Yeshua and Ruach HaKodesh, praying in Yeshua's mighty name, Yahweh, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Amen. So we want to look at this um, this idea of the joy of Yahweh, really the Chedwa of Yahweh. And the reason I bring this study to you today, my friends, is that I know you, like myself, you're watching me deliver each week's newscast in the hope of seeing prophecies, the prophecies of Elohim emerging in such a way that tells us we're going home, that the Nechatef, the rapture, is about to happen. We all certainly see the events of this world climaxing in ways that none of us have ever seen before. I, honestly, I'm aghast <laughs> at uh, what I see going on around me. Aside from the earth, the planet, uh, coming to an obvious climax. I mean, uh, you can't drink water from the earth in pretty much every or any place you go. The food that most of us are eating is void of any nutrition and contaminated with all kinds of unbelievable garbage. Animal and plant life so many forms of animal and plant life are becoming extinct practically by the hour. We are at the end, no matter how you look at it. But what makes me aghast, what appalls me more than anything else, is seeing people yeah, I just always think of this sheep, you know, the lead sheep jumps off a cliff, the whole flock goes off the cliff. It's like, what are you doing? He's going off a cliff, you're running towards a cliff, you're going to jump off the cliff, you're going to die. It's like, and they're just like, you know, shut up, we're all going to the, you know, we're just going. Everybody is walking around with their cell phones, you know, they aren't looking at anything around them, they are completely shut off from any form of real communication with anyone. Children don't know how to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation 
We've seen young people standing right next to each other. Instead of talking to each other, they're both texting to each other, not, not even looking at each other's faces. Nobody sees the deception of Hashatan that's going on. And I know, I know, many of you, it's dri these things uh, are driving you crazy. You know, you want to wake people up, you want to talk to them, you can't. They, you know, it's like talking to a brick. They don't hear, they don't see, they don't understand. They don't want to hear, they don't want to see, they don't want to understand. Put all these things together and it makes us all the more eager to leave this world. We are not of this world. We want to go home. We want to see the magnificent glory of the place that we call home, and yet at present, a place of which we know nothing, you know, we, we can only hope to imagine. But we want to um, get away from all this darkness and confusion and drives, drives you nuts. I, you know, I just have to see dust. And um, I start, you know, crying out, Abba, please, can we go home now? <laughs> you know, uh, there's no dust in eternity, my friends. <laughs> good family, good food, absolute uh, joy, <laughs> the word we're going to study today. Um, but there's no dust. <laughs> I can't wait, you know. I, I hate dust. <laughs> anyway... In the, uh, the book of Nehemiah, Nehemiah, actually Nehemiah, told the Israelites that the joy of Yahweh would be their strength. We look at uh, Nehemiah chapter 8, the second half of verse 10, we see, Do not be worried. And I remind you that the Father instructs us, wor don't worry. Worry only leads to evil. It's a trap of the enemy, Hashatan. Do not let yourself worry about things. But Nehemiah is telling them, don't be worried. Because the joy of Yahweh is your strength and your stronghold. In uh, Nehemiah 8, we are seeing the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem having just uh, been completed, and yet their lives are in shambles. They had spent 70 years in Babylonian captivity, and even though they finished rebuilding the walls in Yerushalayim, their distress continues as we see in Nehemiah chapter 9, verses 36 and 37, where we read, See, we are servants today, servants in the land that you, Elohim, gave to our forefathers so they could eat its fruit and the other good things it produces. And because of our sins, its abundant harvest goes to the sovereigns, the kings that you have placed over us, they rule over our bodies and our cattle as they please, and we are in great distress. Now, isn't that, in many ways, how you and I feel today? We're looking to enjoy our relationship with Elohim, pitching our tents with Him, being washed by and growing in His Word. But we have to do so in a world that's ruled by darkness and confusion, we too are in great distress. But take note that the Israelites, as they were held captive in a foreign land, had forgotten their spiritual heritage. They had forgotten their native language, Safa HaKodesh Kadam. And most of all, they had forgotten Elohim. Well, in many similar ways, living in this world as it is today, corrupted to the max by Hashatan, Satan, in this last hour, it's very, very easy for us to forget our place 
with Yeshua. Easy to forget the importance of knowing his word in its original language and understanding. Easy to forget to be washed by and growing in his word every day. Easy to forget to make Elohim number one on a list of one each and every day. And just like the Israelites of old, we are told that the joy of Yahweh is our strength and our stronghold. So what exactly is the joy of Yahweh? How is it our strength and our stronghold? Well, there are many different Aramaic Hebrew words that are translated into English as joy. But there are only two places in the entire Bible where we see joy as a translation of this word, chedwa. Chedwa only happens two times in the entire word. And it refers to this thing of Yahweh. We see joy in all kinds of places, gladness, you know. Uh, and they interpret Chedwa as joy or, or gladness. But uh, that's not exactly what it is. But there's only two places in, in his word where he talks to us about his Chedwa. It's a very special Aramaic Hebrew word. And uh, the first occurrence is seen in Divrei Hayamim, that's First Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 27, where we read that the strength and joy, uh, the Chedwa, are in Yahweh's place. You know, they say the strength, strength and joy are in Yahweh's place. Really, Chedwa, is in Yahweh's place, his dwelling place, or in his presence, same thing. And then in Nehemiah, uh, ne ne Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 10, where we read that the joy of Yahweh is your strength. Really, the chedwa of Yahweh is your strength. You might say the presence of Yahweh is our strength. But this word that we see as joy is chedwa, Strong's number H2304, and it's spelled chet dalet wa he. Chet is a picture of a fence. It divides, protects, and surrounds. It talks about the resurrection, the net chetef, the rapture. It talks about chai. having life where there is no darkness and where there is the presence of Elohim. Chet also talks about the gifts of the Ruach in operation. Then we have Dalet, picture of the door. Yeshua is the door. Dalet talks about movement in and out of that door. Uh, Dala talks about the four dimensions of space and time. Yochanan, uh, John, in the book of Revelation, Chazon, he was taken out of time. He went through the door, Dalit. And he described uh, what he saw, not in a vision, he was taken out out of space and time and brought into the future to describe what he saw. Uh, he went through the door. Then we have wall, picture of a tent peg, and it talks about securing yourself uh, in the presence of Elohim, pitching your tent with Elohim and learning how he pitches his tent with you. And then finally we have Hey, picture of the spiritual man. Yahweh is Ruach, spirit, and he seeks those who will worship him in Ruach. Hey also says, look, behold, 
it um, brings revelation, the melta of Elohim. Our strength lies in the Hedwa of Yahuwah. Our strength lies in being separated from the things of this world by being protected and surrounded by the presence of Yahuwah, which fills us with Chai, bringing the gifts of his Ruach from his Malchut, his kingdom, into our beings here on earth where they are expressed. As he pitches his tent with us and we pitch our tents with him, worshipping him in the Ruach. Look, behold, the mighty work of Elohim in our lives. The Chedwa of Yahuwah is the gladness of heart that comes from knowing Abba Father that comes from abiding in Yeshua. It comes from being filled with the Ruach HaKodesh. We look at Yochanan, John, chapter 15, verses 7 through 11, where Yeshua tells us, If you stay in me, and my words stay in you, that is, if we are vitally united to him and his message lives in our hearts, he says, you will ask whatever you want and it will be done for you. Verse 8, my father is esteemed by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true Talmudim, disciples. Now, we don't have to prove ourselves to be his Talmudim. If we try to prove ourselves, we're getting in the flesh and completely missing the mark, sinning. He says, when you bear much fruit, the fruit of the Ruach, that proves ourselves to be his true Talmudim. Verse 9, he says, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Stay in my love and do not doubt my love for you. Are, have you been questioning his love for you? Have you been doubting his love? He's... This is a command. Stay in my love and do not doubt my love for you. He is faithful and true. He, his love for you is there and do not ever doubt it because if you're having doubts, you're listening to the lies of demons, Satan's minions. Verse 10, Yeshua says, If you guard my commands and obey my teachings, you will stay in my love. How do you stay in his love? By guarding his commands and obeying his teachings. Now, you know, we don't obey them. He causes us to obey them. But, if we guard his commands, if we meditate on his commands, if we have daily prayer time, daily time growing and being washed by in growing in and being washed by his word, then he causes us to obey his teachings because they are flowering in us by us spending time meditating on them. Do that. And he says, you will stay in my love. Just as I have guarded my father's commands and obeyed his teachings, just as I, Yeshua speaking, stay in his, the father's love. Verse 11, I have told you these things so that my joy may be in you. My chedwa, I've told you these things so that my chedwa 
may be in you and so that your joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. You're experiencing his chedwa may be full and complete and overflowing. This is why he tells us these things. This is why he tells us to uh, pay attention to his commands and his teachings and to meditate on them so that our experience of his chedwa will be full in us. If, uh, if you're not experiencing his chedwa, then you're not spending enough time being washed by and growing in his word. You're not spending enough time in prayer, especially at the start of your day. He wants our first fruits, the first part of our day. What does it take to just lift your hands up and say, Abba, Father, this day I give to you, Yeshua and Ruach HaKodesh. Reveal yourself, reveal your bane, Yeshua. Reveal your indwelling Ruach to me this day. In Yeshua's mighty name I pray, Yahweh, Yahweh my Elohim, Yahweh Echad, e Amen. What does that take? To just, you know, rewind, <laughs> go back to the video, get your stopwatch out and time that. Can you spend that much time when you first get up every day? You've heard me use the word chavarim. That means my friends. Chavari, my friend. Chavar, friend. In verse 14 here in Yochanan, Yeshua says, You are my chavarim if you keep on doing what I command you. In Shaul's day, the called out ones, the Kodeshim, were characterized by the chedwa of Yahweh. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 46 or Acts chapter 13, verse 52. And Chedwa is a distinguishing mark of the Malchut, the kingdom of Elohim. Look at Romeim, Romans, chapter 14, verse 17. Because of its supernatural origin, the Chedwa of Yahweh is present even through the trials and tribulations of our lives. The Chedwa of Yahweh being Chet, surrounded and protected. Uh, seeing him entering your space from his from the Father's presence through the door, Dalit. Seeing him pitching his tent with you, Wo, and you pitching your tent with him. Look, behold what he does. Hey, Chet Dalit Wo, hey, the Chedwa of Yahweh. You know, I was, three and a half years ago, I was taken into the hospital. <laughs> what an experience. First thing they said to me was, we're going to have to put you on dialysis. Whoa. Di I was dialysis. And the Ruach spoke to me immediately. Don't listen. They don't know what they're talking about. Less than ten hours later, the three kidney doctors came in and says, your kidneys are fine. And they had a look on their face like, we don't know what. We, we can't explain nothing. We don't know nothing. 
Uh, your kidneys are fine. We're out of here. They told my family I was... I only had three months or less to live. I can't, you know, I can't explain it to you, my friends, but I saw the Chedwa of Yahweh. I was in that hospital for two weeks. They didn't let me eat or drink anything. And uh, I was in that bed for, for two weeks. They didn't even bother bringing in a physical therapist at any point because they, they thought, you know, he's going he's gonna to die. You know, why bother? Uh, and in the, uh, the second week, I got myself out of that bed. And uh, I did some things every day and then I says you know what where's my physical therapist oh geez you know now they're afraid of a lawsuit they sent some girl to me she walked me down the hall and back she says you don't need physical therapy you're ready to go home <laughs> they uh, they said I had bladder cancer and if I didn't remove the bladder uh, yeah I would die or whatever but my point is I, Yeshua was revealing the Father to me. It was amazing. They would, uh, I didn't explain this in my book, Road to Paradise, but when they took, whenever they would take me out of the room, I would be on a gurney and they would be wheeling me around for various reasons. Um, if I opened my eyes, you know, I could see the ceiling. I was going down the hallway. I knew I was in the hospital. But when I closed my eyes, I saw a canvas. I saw the tent. <laughs> I saw his tent over me. And um, I kept smelling this smell. It was, it was the fragrance of Yahuwah. And uh, I was going down streets in some Middle Eastern village. It's crazy. I opened my eyes, you know, I saw the hospital. I wasn't hallucinating or anything. When I opened my eyes, I knew where I was. But I closed my eyes and I would see his tent over me. Linen, whatever. I thought of canvas, but his chedwa. And um, honestly, I was going through the valley of the shadow of death. They thought I was going to die. They didn't bother with me because they thought, you know, why bother? He's, this guy's not going to make it. And, um, you know, I heard those words. He's not going to live more than three months. You know, we have to, we have to remove, we've got to go in and cut you know, remove stuff from his body. And um, after I got myself uh, strengthened and that physical therapist said, you don't need to, you can go home, you know. Then um, I said, okay, I want to go home. And uh, whatever, I left. I went home. I called the doctor who was supposed to be my physician. I don't have no doctor. My doctor is Elohim. He's my physician. But... The hospital assigned me one. I called him and I said, look, I'm not doing anything that you want me to do. I'm done. And uh, he immediately felt threatened. Oh, Alan, did I say anything? I said, no, doctor, whenever I think of you, I have nothing but good thoughts. I'm just doing this my own way. Go away and leave me alone. Honestly, my friends, past three and a half years, I have seen trials and tribulations that I have not shared with anyone. No one. Except my Elohim. I've had daily meetings with him about what I was going through and ah but this is going on you know give me your counsel your guidance your direction he has walked me through some trials and tribulations that no one knows about I, I've shared it with no one but I can tell you now after three and a half years my health is a hundred percent the cancer is not to be seen or found anywhere in my body. It's over with. Took three and a half years. 
But anyway, the Chedwa of Yahuwah may be inexplicable to one who does not possess it. And I have seen it. I can't describe it, you know, other than, you know, things I share with you in these videos and, you know, what I tried to share in my book, Road to Paradise. But for the true believer, the Chedwa of Yahuwah comes as naturally as picking grapes off a vine. I went in that hospital and they were all, you know, painting this picture and for me to just completely dispel everything they said or thought was as easy as picking grapes off a vine. I can't explain it. It's got nothing to do with me. It's just what he caused me to think, see, and, and feel. As we abide in Yeshua, who is the true vine, we, who are the branches, are full of his strength and vitality, and the fruit that we produce, including joy, or seeing his chedwa, are all his doing. I, um, those two weeks in the hospital, I, had, I enjoyed myself. Um, boy, they took me in for certain kinds of tests and things, and I am telling you, there were places in that hospital that were had thousands of demons. The dark, the darkness was indescribable. That place, oh, and yet. Um, you know, I saw those things, but I did not experience them. Put it that way. Yochanan, John, chapter 15, verse 5, we read, Yeshua says, I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. And if I get choked up, it's because of that. I didn't do anything. He, he did it all. And I know I don't deserve it. It's just his love for me. gives me that kind of beracha, and I am grateful. We know we are B'nai Elohim, and no one can snatch us away from Him. Yochanan, John, chapter 10, verses 28 and 29, we see, And I give them eternal life, and they will never, ever perish not by any means, and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater and mightier than all, and no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. <laughs> We are heirs to an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. And no one, no thing, can steal it from us. First Kepha, that's First Peter chapter 1, verses 3 and 4, we read, Baruch that is gratefully praised and adored. Be the Elohim and Father of our Adon, Yahshua HaMashiach, who, according to his abundant and boundless mercy, has caused us 
to be born from above, not born again. He has caused us to be born from above, that is, to be spiritually transformed, renewed, and made Kodesh, dedicated to him for his purpose, to an ever-living hope and confident assurance through the resurrection of Yeshua HaMashiach from the dead. Verse 4, born from above into an inheritance which is imperishable, that is, beyond the reach of change, and undefiled, unfading, reserved in the Shamaim for you. We see the author and finisher of our faith. And let the enemy rage ever so much. We know who wins in the end. We look at Ivrim, that's Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. We see, therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, and that's speaking of those commended for their belief in Hebrews chapter 11, who testified to the truth of his absolute faithfulness, stripping off every unnecessary weight and this sin which so easily and cleverly entangles us, let us run with endurance and active persistence the race that is set before us. Verse 2, let us look away from all that will distract us and focus our eyes on Yeshua, who is the author and the finisher of our walk with him, who for the joy, the chedwa, of accomplishing the goal set before him, endured the stake, disregarding the shame of being crucified, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of Yahweh, revealing his deity, his authority, and the completion of his work. The emissaries in Yerushalayim, Jerusalem, were arrested two times and ordered not to preach in Yeshua's name. That is, don't you mention or preach the name Yahuwah. And the second time they faced the court, they were beaten for using Yeshua's name, Yahuwah, for teaching that the Father's name. And unfazed by that, they returned home rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name Yahweh and ready to preach some more. Look at uh, Maaseh, Acts chapter 5, verse 41. We look at uh, Ivrim, Hebrews again, chapter 11, verses 12 through 16, where we see, So, from one man, Avraham, Abraham, though he was physically as good as dead, were born many descendants, as numerous as the stars of the Shamayim, and as countless as the sand on the seashore. Verse 13, all these died in belief. They died guided and sustained by being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word without receiving the tangible fulfillment of Elohim's promises, only have anticipated them and having welcomed them from a distance and having 
confessed and acknowledged that they were aliens and strangers on this earth. You feel like an alien and a stranger on this earth? <laughs> Verse 14, now those who say such things, those who speak this way, I feel like an alien and a stranger on this earth. Those who say those things and speak that way make it clear that they are looking for a home of their own. They are looking for a country of their own. They're looking for a place which they can truly call home. Verse 15, and if they had been thinking of that country from which they departed as their true home, they would have had a continuous opportunity and a recurrent chance to return. Verse 16, but the truth is that they were longing for a better country, that is, a country of the Shamayim, the heavens. And for that reason, and for that reason, Yahuwah is not ashamed of them, nor is he ashamed to be called their Elohim, because he has prepared a city for them. Romeim, Romans chapter 8, verses 23 through 25, we read, We too who have the first fruits of the Ruach, a joyful indication of the Birchot blessings to come, even we groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for the sign of our adoption as sons, the redemption and transformation of our bodies at the Nechatef, the resurrection. For in this hope we were saved by being washed by and growing in Yahweh's word. But hope which is seen is not hope at all. For who hopes for what he already sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait eagerly for it. Get this, my friends. With patience and composure. We all long to go home and our longing increases every day as we see the world getting crazier and crazier and crazier around us. But as we hope for what we can't see, we are told to wait eagerly as we do for it, but with patience. Is it going to be this Yom Teruah? Yeah, be patient. And with composure. The Mel Todd jumped out at me when we were doing our study in Romeim, and I read that, um, composure jumped out at me. It's hard for me to remain composed. I, you know, I get so frustrated, I want to get out of here. <laughs> but uh, our Adon tells us to be patient and um, to wait eagerly, but with composure. Control yourself. Be patient. Trust in Him. It's His doing, not ours. Um, be filled with the fruit of the Ruach. What the last one listed is self-control. You have to have self-control in order to exercise composure. <laughs> so, you know, my friends, as uh, we look at the news each week and we see ISIS growing like a wild fire in the world 
and we see all the uh, injustice that goes on in so many ways. Be encouraged, you know. It's, these are signs that we are going home soon. Um, have no fear. These are all things that must happen in accordance with Elohim's plan. And um, wait eagerly for the Netchatef, for that trumpet sound where we are taken up and do we go home and have <laughs> experience Chedwa forever. Um, but do so patiently and with composure. Get a grip. Control yourself. And trust in him. He knows what he's doing. And he knows when he's going to do it. There's nothing we can do. But to wait eagerly. With patience and composure. Let's bow our hearts. Dear beloved Abba Father. Abba we come before you to praise you. And to thank you for today's study. Oh, Abba, please fill our hearts with eagerness to come home, eagerness to know fully your chedwa. But fill us, Abba, with patience. Fill us with composure. Teach us to be patient. Teach us to be composed. Cause us, Abba, to spend our time with you every day, making you number one on a list of one. Thank you, Abba, for opening our eyes, our ears, and our hearts so that we can see, hear, and understand your truth. As we give this day to you, Yeshua, and Ruach HaKodesh, praying in Yeshua's mighty name, Yahweh, Yahweh, our Elohim, Yahweh Echad. Amen. And that, my friends, is our study for this week. I hope and I pray that it has been a mighty Bercha to you and yours. I hope and I pray that it continues to be a mighty beracha to you and yours. Abba willing, I'll see you again here next week. Until then, shalom, my friends. Some would rather let it lie, but the question still remains.